Hello. Welcome back to Arknights Break the Ice. I'm just gonna get right into the story. I don't have a lot of time to record tonight. A lot of stuff to do this weekend that I just don't have the time to do much of this, unfortunately. Now that this is settled, the three clans must start li liaising, okay, frequently with one another. We must further discuss the specific of the transfer of power to the Saintus and what powers each family is allowed to keep. However, aside from this, the preparations the three of us must make for the ritual are equally important. Therefore, with the upcoming ceremony, I propose we seize the occasion and transfer our powers to the Saintus at the same time. The ceremony and the transfer of powers are managed by different individuals. As such, both can be conducted at the same time. What's more, the ceremony also calls for the participation of the clan's leaders. What do you think of the idea, if I may ask? To, may, if I may to ask? The decision has been made. It will be open. It will happen in due course. <laughs> this year's ceremony will also be the ceremony of the transfer of powers. The Saintus, huh? Guess we have something to look forward to. In that case, I will have my men draft the relevant documents to distribute them across Cherig. Cherig. I am sure the masses will be rejoiced to learn of this. Wait. Is something the matter? You can't hoodwink your way out of this, NCOs. Who will manage the valleys and the mines in the next few days? Gnosis was in charge, but you have been fired. Who will take care of all of that? You needn't worry, Arctos. I hired an expert from outside of Kierig. This expert will conduct a field investigation on the valley and the mine from a disease prevention perspective and construct a medical facility within Silver Ash territory. I'll put this person in complete control of the two areas. Look at, this, at, look at the time. The train should be arriving in Carlin right about now. If you two would like to meet the expert, you need only wait a short moment longer. Enough of this nonsense. I have no idea who you hired and what you are planning with the medical charade. However, this so-called expert of yours will stay within the my sight at all times. This is my guest you're talking about, Arctaz. That's exactly why, NCOs. You said that overmining from Nos was Gnosis doing, and I couldn't care less whether that's the case or not. The way I see it, anyone you hire might as well be another Gnosis. We may be rid of one, but there will always be more. You want to leave your men in charge of that place? Fine, but you will have to show me what this expert is capable of. If your expert does well, then not only will you they be our guests, your guests, NCOs, I vow to welcome them with my warmest hospitality as my own guest. What's the matter? You were talking so big, do you really need so much time to think? If everything is as you said, what is there to hesitate about? Or do you mean to tell us this person you hired is indeed another Gnosis, here to do your dirty work again? The Palaroshas have always been in charge of the Vine Bear Court's security. Now that I have agreed to turn these lands over to the court, I cannot be more reassured with the Palaroshas looking after them. That said, a word of advice, Arctaz. You best be careful. Entertaining these guests of ours will be no walk in the park. Is it, is it the doctor? The doctor. Ha. Not a problem. There are no guests in we Palaroshas cannot entertain. Let's find out whether this guest is as stiff-necked as you. Sirius, you need to look into this guest. Having me run your errands again? I'm not in the mood for your sharp tongue. Err. Uh, munch. Munch. Munch here. Give me a car. Of course. Yukatan, go. Please watch your step, madam. Are they not married yet? Oh? Valace, what's your view in all of this? I'm afraid I'm not capable enough to see NCO's 1010. I don't blame you, but I certainly didn't expect that crafty woman Rotatos to agree to it. I don't get it. It's Matriarch Rotatos. I'm sure she has her ideas. Hmm. <laughs> all I know is that Silver Ash Brat has to be planning something. And he may sound like he has a point, but I will never believe anything he says so easily. Tell Gulo to invite Enciod's guest over. We'll figure out what to do later. Yes, sir. 
Is she a sheep or something? A ram, maybe? This place looks familiar. Man, I didn't expect it to start snowing the moment we got off the train. Doctor, let's wait till it stops before we head up the mountain. That's some heavy snow. Snowball fight, who's in? <laughs> hmm? Actually, that sounds like fun. But we still have a long way to go. We should save our strength. Uh, it's kind of a pain to get to Carlin right now. Nope, the train will take us all the way to the foot of the mountain one day. Just look at that. We may call this the Carlin Railway, but there's actually a stretch of distance from the station to the foot of the mountain where we aren't allowed to build anything. They still aren't allowed to build anything there? Sounds like it's going to be difficult then. Yeah, that's, that fits better into the conversation. There is a lot of resistance to the idea, but I'm not too sure about the stuff. But I don't think it's going to be easy. Still recording okay? Yeah. A lot of people here insist on walking every single step up Mount Carlin. Thinking to do otherwise would be unfaithful. Unfaithful, but I don't think Karagondor would mind. Yeah, because... Wait, they built the... The tracks all the way up the mountain. Almost all the way. Like, it's like halfway up the mountain then you have to walk the rest of the way because Leto had took that railway up the they're not railway the uh what the fuck is it called this I don't remember what it's called she took it all the way up halfway though and then like walked the rest of the way we Kyarik folk always keep the faith in our hearts how would taking a train straight to the mountain change any of that yeah right Sir Enciodes was always wanted to have the railway go to straight to Carlin alas the lands up ahead belong to the Kalaroshes. Our Arctods would never let him build any tracks there. Half a year ago, there was even a bit of a tussle between General Gulo of the Kalaroshes and not Gnosis. With Gnosis? Alright, I haven't heard anything about him for a while. Is he doing okay? He was fired because of that scuffle. One of the reasons Serencios invited the doctor here is because he wanted the doctor to fill his role. Huh? How come no one told me that? Doctor, did anyone... We're being ambushed! What's the matter? Who are you people? Are these the Shigata? Lady Encia, behind me! Oh, it's Gulo! On Sir Arctos's order, I'm here to extend the Silver Ashes guest, Bubba G, an invitation to the Arctos estate. You're bringing all the soldiers along to invite our guests to your place? That's funny. What kind of sick joke is this? This place belongs to my family, the Silver Ashes. General Gulo, you may work for the Palaroshes, but I suggest you don't do anything out of line. I see you're here as well, Lady Encia. You'll have to pardon me for my intrusion. I'll cut to the chase. Dr. Bubba G is the Silver Ashes guest, and you aren't bringing anyone along on your, on your way home. Not on my watch. Relax, Lady Encha. Sir Arctos only wanted to invite the esteemed guests to pay our humble abode or visit. As if my brother would agree to something that unreasonable. Not to worry, Lady Encha. Your brother, Sir Encios, has already given us his approval. No way! It's true. Also, Lady Encia, mention the ownership of the land here. This isn't Silver Ash territory anymore. From now on, the land belongs to the Vine Bear Court. Come again? Weiss, what's the meaning of this? First, as the doctor was invited here, then it's the ownership of the lands. What else are you keeping from me? Sorry, Lady Encha. Weiss, come on, what's happening? Which one of you is Bubba G? It's him. It definitely <laughs> not me. The one in the hood. Right, it's you. Raise a long, sharp sigh. <sighs> Wait. If you say so. Don't move! Hands off your weapons! Last warning, no funny moves. You don't seem very happy about our arrangement. Know your place, outsider. Sir Arctos gave you an invitation. Most people are never so lucky. You dare act so impudent, knowing that's an esteemed guest who stands before you? A tall woman walks towards you. Dagenbrecker? Is it? Yeah, I knew it. Ah, oh, that's so cool. Immediately, everything falls silent. The Kyarik soldiers 
surrounding you put away their weapons and step aside as the timid looks on their faces. Yeah, she's still scary. <laughs> she takes a quick glance at all of you, briefly pausing in your gaze, lands on the elite operator standing next to you. Oh, it's sharp. They end up... Mm, okay. The moment their eyes meet, they put their hands on their weapons by pure instinct. I assume you will do whatever it takes to get this doctor to pay your visit today. We have orders, and Sir Enciodes gave us his approval. You shouldn't have a problem with that. Relax, I'm not here for you. Is this sheep here for Lensha? Yeah, Lady Ensha. Enciodes asked me to escort you home. Dagen Brecker, did my brother really? Correct. I'm here to receive our guest for Enciodes, and I've done that now. And you'll hand me over to these guys right straight away? <laughs> That's right. Please, go on. Looks like Sir Enciodes is so busy that he doesn't have the time to come fetch the doctor himself. Correct. Put your weapon down. I would rather not offend our guest's bodyguard in any way. It's part of my job to carry a weapon at all times, and you're not my boss. Enough, Sharp. No bloodshed here. I'm the doctor's bodyguard. Wherever the doctor goes, I go. My instructions are to invite the doctor and the doctor alone. It's okay, Sharp. You go stand by somewhere else. If you say so. Doctor, are you seriously going? Hell yeah, this sounds like fun! Doctor, stop greening. <laughs> How did she know? <laughs> You're reminding me of my brother. And why are you going along with this? I don't get it. Gulo? You do well to treat our guests better than that. Say, please. Doctor of Rhodes Island, please follow us to the Polarosha State. The Black Knight is so well-mannered. Oh, oh? Three-time champion of Kashmir's Major. Nah, let's not bring up that. I will not say that either. Your name still has legs in Kashmir's. Hmm. Yeah, why would I bring up the fact that she can't use arts? That was like a curse to her when she was a child. I'm just NCO's bodyguard. Give him my regards. I will. Lead the way. Looks like I'm working overtime again. <laughs> Here come daily. Extra edition. Breaking news. At the Tri Clan Council that just concluded, the Vine Bear Court and the clans have come to a shocking understanding regarding the Carlin mining question. To resolve the differences between the families and to better drive Carrig's development, the clans have all agreed to turn the position portions of their authority over to the Saintus, in accordance with the teachings of Caragonder. Moreover, the clans have all agreed to fully assist the Saintus in her role as the leader in service of leading Carrig toward a better tomorrow. Water. Water. Enciodes, your home, Encha. You've traveled far, my dear sister. Enciodes, why? Low down. Why did you hand the doctor over to the Palaroche? <laughs> I need the doctor to carry some of Gnosis' responsibilities for me. And as you know, the relationship between Carlin Trade and the Palaroches has been tense. Arctos demanded that the doctor operate under his supervision, and it's a reasonable ass. Then why didn't you tell the doctor? Not even I knew about this arrangement. It happened after I had the invitation sent out. But still, I know Rhode Island saved you, and I know you think very highly of the doctor. Trust me, Ensha, I think of the doctor no less highly than you do. Does she have any, like, visible marks because of the infection, or no? Unless if that's what that is, or that's just... I don't know. The doctor comes to harm there. The Polaroches will pay the price. No, Enciotes, I'm not just a Silver Ash. I'm an employee of Rhodes Island. I have a responsibility to assure the doctor's safety. Leave that to me. You've grown up, Ensha. Let's do this, then, Matterhorn. Sir, have someone keep an eye on what's going on. What the fuck? Did that just... Okay. What's going happening over there? What's going to happen over there? As soon as the doctor begins to work in the valleys and mines, you may take Ensha to the doctor. Very good, sir. Enciodes. Go, Ensha. Rest well. All right. Aw, he actually likes this sibling. <laughs> Master, about the doctor. Matterhorn, make sure Ensha is safe. I will. It's useless, you know. She isn't the kind of girl we can keep inside the house. I'll keep an eye on her. I need you to stand by. 
on standby. So be it then. Speaking of which, how much do you know about this doctor of Rhodes Island? An excellent scholar of outstanding professionalism who understands the profits that Rhodes Island will see from working with me. That the doctor so quickly got the grasp of the situation and accepted the arrangement shows that I was, incre I was correct in my assessment. Why do you ask? I don't think the doctor is merely a scholar. Great at sniffing things out, no doubt, and much more so than you expected, too. And besides, this doctor sends your regards. You think the doctor foresaw all of this? I sense the, not a bit of surprise under that hood. <laughs> not only did this scholar of yours understand the situation completely, there was never even a hint of astonishment, and I must emphasize that. What's more, apparently my reputation precedes me. Looks like our friend came prepared. Trust my intuition, Nencioads. I have an eye for people. You might have made yourself an enemy with this move of yours. An enemy? No. If the intel I gathered and your description are correct, the doctor will become my dearest friend. Or should I say, I'll become the doctor's dearest friend? Strencius, it's time for your meeting. Let's go. Strencius, it's time for your meeting. Oh, it's Gnosis. What's Gnosis doing here? He never should. He's never showed his face at meetings like this. Huh, I heard the one they hired to clean up his mess is finally here. I bet he couldn't bear with the shame any longer and came to beg the boss for mercy. Haven't you heard? Gnosis' replacement has taken a wave by the Palaroshes. The way I see it, he's here to try his luck, thinking he's got a chance. Impossible. There's no chance at all. Gnosis sits quietly in the conference room. Everyone sits far away from him, but their gossip, gossip echoes through the room, clear as day. Gnosis, it's been a while. You've lost weight. Thanks to you, Mr. President. We spent four years in Victoria together. It pains me to see things turn out this way. And Seals, you've thrown me under the bus already. Let's skip the pleasantries. Gnosis, you prick. Don't you know who you're talking to? If it wasn't for your friendship with the President, you wouldn't even be allowed to stand here now that you're sacked. I don't remember needing anyone's permission to stand here. How dare you? Gnosis, there is no doubt that Carlin Trade owes much of much to you for its establishment and growth. However, whether you have the right to be here or not, that is not for you to say. Uncle Chester, please. Very well. First, regarding the sentencing of Carlin Trade's former Chief Technical Officer Gnosis Edelweiss, there is no doubt that the expansion of the valleys and mines under Gnosis Edelweiss's management has brought the company tremendous profit. But, on the other hand, the rapid expansion strategy and the secret mining of Carlin has brought the company under the repeated scrutiny of the Tri-Clan Council. Council. In particular, when the other clans asked the to participate in the Valley's investigation, Gnosis planned to ambush the two clans' inspection team. This has severely damaged the Carlin Trade's image in the Silver Ashes standing in the Tri-Clan Council. Therefore, President Encios has decided that, effective today, Gnosis Edelweiss will be formally terminated as the Carlin Trade employee. So that's why you had me come here? You wanted to read all the criticisms you have for me out loud in front of everyone? Your actions have brought harm to Carlin Trade's profits? This is how I answer your, your our stakeholders. I hope you can understand. Very well, NCOs. I would never have imagined all those years ago, when I came to care to build this place up with you, that this is how it would all end. I am sure both you and I agree that it's far from more it's far more important to do what's reasonable and beneficial than look back on old times. That said, I will leave you your lab. You are free to keep using it as soon as any sensitive Carlin Trade data has been removed. I could also arrange for you to join a caravan heading to, for Victoria, if that's what you prefer. I have to answer to all the stakeholders here. Likewise, I have to give you an answer. If you think you're, what you're doing is reasonable, then I feel nothing but disappointment in you. Carlin Trade yet needs my technology, and Kiarig's industrial sector has not come so far that it can progress without importing core technologies from the outside world. You promised me a suitably large stage and backed my research so that we can break new ground in these promising snowlands for the welfare of the people of Kiarig. In the end, this is where my stage is, and I'm being thrown under the bus for this company. 
I still approve of your achievements in academic research, Gnosis. That is why, more than anyone, I'm hoping that you can reflect on what you have done. You should never have let things out of my control. <laughs> Are you so weak now that you're scared of letting anything out of your iron grip? If that doesn't open my eyes. A loud bang reverberates throughout the room. Gnosis slams the conference room's door. Conference room's door shut with even... With enough force... Jesus, what is up? With enough force that the gust of wind sends paper flying through the air. Shocked by the sudden su <laughs> sudden thunderclap, the spectators all instinctively look towards the source of the sound before casting their heads down under the invisible pressure. No one knows just what expression NCO holds at this moment. Let's continue, Chester. As requested by Sir Arctaz, the leader of Rhodes Island, Dr. Bubba G, will be in charge of the transfer of the valleys and mines under the protection of the Pala Roches. We will formally introduce the doctor to everyone at the company once all the stakes at hand are complete. On to our next topic, the meat of our meeting today. The preliminary discussions on how to partition the company's power and hand it over to the Sanctus. First off, on the matter of tariffs. That would be boring to read. Good thing they skipped it. <laughs> what do I call you, outsider? Uh, Bubba G. Funny name. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh, Valais told me. NCO's people call you the doctor. That's what I'll call you. Doctor, do you know why you're here? I don't. Hmm. NCO wants you to take Gnosis' place. But I don't trust his people. That's why I'm keeping an eye on you. I didn't know that was part of my job description. NCOs didn't fill me on the details. I'm just here on vacation. You got the wrong person, I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, I don't know that was part of my job description. Sir, I'm pretty sure that we got a smartass playing dumb here. Huh. You're NCO's guest. Even if you really don't know a thing, you're still NCO's people. Belace, tell your, our guest the deal. Sir NCO has decided to transfer the valley and the mines to the Vine Bear Court. The man who was in charge of the mines in the factory was his subordinate, Gnosis, and ever since Gnosis was dismissed, the coordinator position has been left vacant. According to Sir Enciodes, you are his replacement. I see. Looks like you have a clear understanding of the situation now. Until I am sure that Enciodes isn't making any funny moves in the mines and the valleys, you aren't leaving this place. Don't even think about pulling any tricks yourself. My men don't care about etiquette nearly as much as Edis Enzio's people. <clears throat> If they want your head, there's nothing I can do to stop them. Ha! <laughs> Boss, look at this squirt. I wouldn't know where to chop if I were to try to my blade on this midget. Ha 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 ha! Shut up, all of you. I'm not going to make things too hard for you, outsider. In the end, you're NCO's guest. As long as you play along, we don't do anything to you. Am I making myself clear? I'm not worried. All of you look like reasonable people to me. Enough, Valace. Show our guest to the bedroom. Very good, sir. Why do they keep threatening me? Enya, I'm coming. In. I'm coming in. What the hell? I knew it. You're still sleeping. Enya. Enya. Rise and shine. Huh? Huh? Oh, morn. After a brief fuss, Enya gets dressed and sits in front of her dressing table. Kiar naturally stands behind her and combs her hair. <sighs> What's the matter now? You know. Isn't it a good thing to become leader of all three clans? You always say that in the Vine Bear Court, your role is simply to keep the masses calm. And most of the time, it's actually the Great Elder who calls the shots. This is an opportunity. I shouldn't... I wouldn't be so worried if it had been... Arctaz, or even Rotados who brought up the idea, but it was Enciodes who made that proposal. Perhaps the guilt suddenly got it to him? I sure hope so. But if you're so worried about this, couldn't you have turned it down? Didn't you agree to it without it thinking twice? That's because there wasn't a point in dragging it out. No one had any grounds to object. Doesn't matter whether he really wants me to be Karag's leader. There wasn't anyone who could reject the proposal then and there. 
and we had set the issue aside. More people would have found out. You told me that the masses have gotten used to the peace, just like they've gotten used to the endless snow on the mountains. People of Karag wish for peace first and foremost, and they gravitate towards those who can bring them peace. Right. Peace. Whether it's the peace that NCOs brought them, or the peace that the Vine Bear Corp brought, that's why, even if I turned down the offer, the people would have asked me to accept. So I might as well take the initiative myself before the Great Elder makes all the arrangements. You think NCOs foresaw that? He made the proposal that no one could refuse. Under normal circumstances, he would have been the last person to suggest this. I'm sure both Arctos and Rotados thought of the same thing. I can see why Arctos went along with it, but Rotados? She was never the kind of person to give up easily. What a headache. I really hope Karagander will hear my prayers and teach the Great Elder and the Three Clan leaders a good lesson. Perhaps she's already heard your prayers and just... It isn't it just isn't time yet. What is she gonna do to them? <laughs> do you want her to take care of NCOs too? For him as cruel as possible. <laughs> now let's put this necklace on you and we're done. Mm-hmm. Right. Would you give this letter and scarf to Ensha? Also, ask her to come pay the mountain a visit, right? You know me well. <laughs> also, send the word out that. I'll be analyzing scriptures today, and I don't want to be disturbed. I, I need some time to think. Of course! After Kiara leaves the room, Enya opens the drawer to see an exquisitely decorated base, holding an eye-catching, elegant rock. The rock. Oh, Kiara, Gondor, please guide me. What should I do? No longer live in times where isolation is enough to keep ourselves out of the affairs around us. In the past hundreds, hundred years, there have been countless exchanges and conflicts between nations. Colombia rose quickly in a conflict, while Gaul, a powerful country, was also wiped out in a conflict. All the world's nations are slowly changing in these times, separated by catastrophes. Refusing relations with others is no longer an option. Kerrig cannot continue to lock itself away in these snowy mounts. Karagander's protection, if Karagander really exists in the first place, can bring the Snow Realm this far. If we are to go any further, Karagander must grow stronger than ever before. The millennium of peace and quiet has reached its end, and we cannot wait for others to open the door for us. Karag needs to make contact with the outside world. We must take that step forward while we have still have control. That's the Silver Ash tradition. Karag must remain Karag. We still have a chance, but time grows short for the Snowy Mountains. I have seen our world. I have to make a difference. Everything I've witnessed needs to have a meaning. Was that Mr. Silver Ash talking? Sorry, my hair's being weird today. So you are Gnosis. That's right. Do you know who I am? Sirius Browntail, sister of the Browntail clan matriarch, Potato's Browntail. You know that? And you have the balls to forego a salute. Why must I salute someone whom I have nothing to do with? You? Don't you know your manners? If we must talk manners, you should work on yours first, Sirius Browntail. I heard all your commotion outside the door. What's more, when nobles meet, they must each first curtsy to each other with a carlin bow. If you show up here without affording me any curtsy, why should I show you any? Courtesy. Courtesy, not curtsy. What the fuck was that? What the hell? <laughs> Just how outdated is your idea of etiquette? Etiquette never dies. It's only slowly forgotten. As a noble, you should feel sorrow in that. The Edelweises have long been in charge of the management of Kiarag's texts and records. I admire your knowledge of Kiarag etiquette, Mr. Gnosis. Still, though, I'm afraid Madam Sirius isn't here to discuss Kiarag etiquette. Could we please move on to the main topic? Very well. I'm curious. Considering Rotados refused my cap capitulation, capitulation, why is she now reaching out to me? Hmm. Do you have to ask? It's because your master proposed handing his powers over to the Sanctus at the Tri Clan Council. I see. In that case, go home and tell Rotados. Now that things have come to this, I'm likely not the only one who will cooperate, given the um, bright amount of sincerity. 
Oh? Mm -hmm. Per Sir Arctaz's orders, please stay here while you are not attending to your duties. If you need to head outside, we will serve as your bodyguards. Kerrig may be a safe place, but we cannot guarantee no one will take the chance to cause trouble. You will be served the finest delicacies that Kerrig has to offer. You may also use anything here as you see fit. All your daily needs will be met during your stay with us. If you require anything, please let the servants know. You may also have them relay anything to me. Very well. I look forward to dinner. Keeping an eye on me whenever I'm out, huh? I head out, huh? That'd be annoying. Oh. Orpathy consultation and the grand ceremony. Are those the only reasons my brother is inviting you to the Snow Realm? Oh, the grand ceremony takes place annually in Kerrig. It's the biggest ascent, event, and the most important thing to the Kerrig people. On that day, everyone in Kerrig stops what they're doing and offers Kerrig on Earth, the goddess of our mountains, our most sincere prayers. We pray for a happy, peaceful year under our mountain goddess's protection. As for the Oropathy problem, Kerrig didn't have many infected in the past, so most of us don't know much about Oropathy. In the Snow Realms, Oropathy is far from the greatest threat we face. Ever since my brother got the mountains connected by railway, we've been getting more and more visitors and life has gotten much better. Thanks to that, everyone's starting to learn more about the infected in Oropathy. I guess Oropathy's stepping into the limelight since there are no pressing matters. Kerrig still doesn't have any professional means to test for Oropathy, let alone helping the infected get settled and get treatment. Oh, so I guess it's not, like, visible on her. So, like, some people it's not visible then? Given the situation, you might be the best consultant they can get. Doctor, are you going to accept the invitation? That's not for something I can decide all by myself. Do you want me to? Huh? Personally, I really want you to go. My parents died in an accident when I was still a kid. And after they died, my brother Enciodes took over all the business to support the family. He kept us afloat all by himself until I came of age. Then, to ensure our family's future, he left Carrick to study in Victoria. Victoria? <laughs> Why did I say it like that? Our family was already on pretty shaky ground before he left Carrick, and that was around when he started getting more and more headstrong. But at least we all still got along well as siblings. But things changed ever since he came back and started Carlin to trade. Both my brother and sister treated me very well, but for some reason, two of them started talking less, and their relationship shower showered. They showered. Five years ago, when the last Saintist passed away, my sister joined the trials and became the new Carrick Saintist. She's rarely left Mount Carolyn since, and I haven't had a lot of chances to see her. We only write to each other now. And ever since she became the Saintist, it feels like my brother's often at odds with her. I may be very good at mountain climbing, but I wouldn't know where to start to mend relationships. But you're really amazing, Doctor. You get along with people, and you've solved a lot of problems for people. That's why I'm thinking that if we ever had the chance, maybe you could help me come up with ideas? But... What? Doctor, I guess this might seem weird coming from me, but I know my brother better than anyone else. He's amazing, but he's the kind of person who doesn't mind doing whatever it takes to achieve his goals. I'm actually a little worried that you'll end up becoming a pawn in his game if you go. That's why it's okay if you don't want to. I'll bear with it for now. That's why I told you you should have gotten out while you still could. Look at you now. You're caught. Are you the one who talked to me at the market? You knew this would happen? Uh, I mean, that's obvious, but you knew this would happen? I can ask you the same, calm outsider. The entire time you've been here, you haven't even showed the tiniest bit of worry. Did you know that this was going to happen? What should I call you? Call me Kara. I changed my mind. I want to be friends with you. Would you like to be friends with me? Um, maybe show yourself first? Uh, why don't you tell me what this talking rock is all about first? Hmm, that's classified information. Well... I don't really have <laughs> so much time to keep bothering you if you really don't want to talk, but it's not so bad to have somebody to talk to, don't you think? The literal god of these people are talking to me, just casually. Okay. Do I also do this real quick? 
Uh, this would be pretty easy. The ice ends here and here. So I keep my men situated in this area, then I shouldn't have to deal with freezing. It'll just be annoying from there and there. Well, the enemies will be slowed there. That will be annoying. Let's just do it. It's gonna have me read some more, too, so... Let's get right into the reading some more! Can't make it a 20-minute episode. Laura! You're a lovely one to your family. What? You're a lovely one to your family, helping with the work the second you're back. Oh, no, I'm just what I should. Then do I just... I'm just doing what I should. I'd love to take a good look around, too. Oh, it really does change once you study outside. Far better had... Far better had on you than my little brother. What a wonderful girl you are. Shame. Who knows if I'll ever find one as nice as you again after I move. Wait, Sasa, you've been living fine here all this time, right? Why the move? My dad, you know. Yesterday, the Tri Clan Council, they announced the Saintess would lead the three, right? Now, Dad's all fired up. Oh, Uncle Zar. Zoer? Was always against NCO's open door policy, right? We all moved here from up north back when, then so my brother and I could get work. And here, Dad pretty much just got used to it over the years. And now they announced that the resignation yesterday, and he's over the moon. At dinner last night, he was going on and on, mad at Serencio's for everything he's done over these years, and I was fed up hearing it, and I even had an argument with him, but you can't change his mind in the end. We even end up moving straight back to the Polarosha's territory. So what about your brother's job? Who knows? Once the resignation's through, resignation's through it's up in the air if Terracom can still do business like before. I heard the Polarosha say... See, in the first place, it was the Saintess last council who wanted certain NCOs handing the valleys and mines over. She's going to govern Carrig. Certain NCOs probably isn't getting any favors. That's true. It's a good thing too, though. You might have missed it, but being outside for so long. But the three clans got along fine at first. It's just lately they've fallen out more and more with each other. A lot of people were scared, and after last council, we'd get into a full-blown war. Yeah, it's amazing how Sir Encio just yielded on this, and he's putting power with the Saintess? Yeah, just, it should have happened long ago, if you ask me. I don't hate his open-door policy, seeing as our family made a good living from it, too. But sometimes it really does feel like the peop old people say how Kerrig's not like Kerrig anymore. Him deciding to give away now, give away now, and make less of a fuss? Everyone approves of that. It's just old grumps like your big brother against it. My brother? I'm back! Oh, you silly kid. I told you to relax once you got home, but you just had to work. You and your orpathy thing. You might, <laughs> you might not feel bad about your health, but we still hurt over it. That's sad. It's all right, sis. Better work like this won't get in the way. Uh, where's bro? He said he was heading to the factory just now and went all out all in a hurry. Said he wouldn't be back yet today either. The factory? Is that the captain? Captain, is something up? Vacation's over, Aurora. The doctor got nabbed at the station by the Road family yesterday. Huh? Doctor went with them voluntarily. You should get what I mean. Likely some sort of plan ticking under that hood. Uh-uh, there's nothing under that hood, let me tell you. I took a rough look at the map. Takes some time from the station to the Polaroches, and the doctor should have gotten there by now, and we ought to be on our way. I'm using the pretext to head to yours now to check the situation, then I'll come out and converge with you. Got it. That's a cool shield. I guess I'll go rendezvous with the captain, then. That sucks. I see. So you're the one from Rhodes Island. Uh, you didn't pick me out on purpose? Correct. You're very unique, but I don't know why it is you're so unique. Back of the market, what did you mean? Hmm? There's no more than a word of advice. You see, aren't you under the watch of a group of strangers, unfree to even stroll outside? What do you know? 
Before I answer your question, tell me first. For what reason did you come to Kyarig? Partnership with Karen Trent? Nah. To help Cliffheart make up with her siblings. Actually, yeah, that would be the most likely reason that. Mending the three Silver Ashes relations? You speak some hefty words. <laughs> I'm very curious how outsiders like you regard this land of Kyarig. Very peaceful here. People here are faithful. Yeah. In the end, their belief in Karagander is the root of what condenses the people in this land together. But at times, I've felt the people are somewhat too dependent on belief. Can you sympathize? You tell every worry you have to the divine, hoping they'll come to help solve things, and so you turn... Though so clearly, you should use your own willpower to change circumstances. You just take divine will as an excuse to stagnate. Though so clearly, you, you till by your own hands to gain your harvest. You still thank the divine for their generosity after the fact. Though, so clearly, making the choices, putting in the effort, should be for each person's own. The way you see it, should Karag change? Uh, you can't generalize this issue. I don't know this place well enough yet. You can't generalize that kind of stuff. And here I thought you'd say everything backwards should be changed. I've heard countless people say things like yours already. Like, some things shouldn't change sometimes. Like, people... I mean, obviously, the people's belief in Karagander doesn't change between this one and the next one. Which is, like, that's a good thing. People having certain beliefs that they truly believe in, like, that's good. It's not bad to have beliefs in things. I'm not really a relig religious person, but shit, people are religious? Good for them. It's their belief system that keeps them afloat. But then it's also like, technology always has to advance somehow, though. Otherwise, in the case of this, they'll just go to war and disappear after one war. Or the mountain will cave in because all the snow that's on it and just wipe them all out. Like, So, like, technologically, they should change, but not, like, their beliefs and stuff. Which, obviously, they didn't change in the end. And those people, by and large, are those born and raised in Kerrig? So, what do you know? I... I have a friend. This friend has been thinking all this time about how finally, how to finally change Carrick for the better. However, she's thought for a long time and can't come up with an answer. She's gradually realized that everyone thinks different to her, and their mindsets, no matter who they are, all disturb her. She wants to do something, but every time she wants to, there's always someone ad advising against her. Now she finds she's become slowly unable to stop what those people wish to do. And it's in this moment you've arrived. You think this is some sort of omen? Omen? Perhaps any port in a storm is a more fitting description. An invite, invitee of Enciodes come from an outer lands. <clears throat> the spectrum and scent of you give me, of you give me an otherly, otherly feeling. What the hell? Okay, it's peculiar and novel. Tell me, stranger, what does your arrival pretend? Come to mention it. Maybe you can do me a favor. What are you, what? What are you asking of the god of this land? <laughs> Ensha, I hope this letter finds you well. I hear you've come back to Kierig. I'm very, very happy for that. Though I can't descend the mountain to meet you. Getting word that you were safe and healthy delighted me more than anything. I also hear that the people helping to treat your orpathy came to Kierig with you. If I have the chance, I'd love to express my thanks to them. We're saving my sister. They deserve the blessings of Karagander. Remember to greet your neighbors and tell them you're sound. Be early to bed and early to wake, and don't forget to pray twice to Karagander every day. Also, you're not allowed to climb any mountains. <laughs> All right, I think you're probably fed up with your sister going on, so I'll stop nagging you here. May you enjoy your time back home, Ensha. I'll pray before Karagander for blessings upon you. P.S. If you can write a letter back to me, that'll be all the better. She's probably lonely as hell up on that mountain. Come on, I only got her last letter not long ago. Seriously, it's like she hasn't written in forever. She's on my case like this every time. Thank you, Car. You're always the one handling, handing me my sister's letters. It's all right. The great Santa's can't descend them out. Can't descend at will. So I go out and about. What is wrong with me? So I go out and about in her place, and I'll bring back outside news to her. It's as she desires, too. Sorry. 
I've got no room to write a letter back for now. I'm about to get ready for something else. Based on the bag next to you, you're going to head outdoors? Yep. Where are you going? To climb Jongpyor? Fro? Come on, I forgot until you mentioned it. I still haven't conquered Jungfrau. But where I'm going is to the valleys this time. The valleys? Aren't they about to be handed over to the Vine Bear Court? And there's n so many factories there too. What are you going to do? The doctor's gonna head there, which means I have someone to see. <clears throat> oh, Kiar, you have no idea who I'm talking about, do you? Ah, I do believe I've heard tell. The guest taken away by the Polyrochus? Mm-hmm. My guest... My guest in the first place. Concern for the doctor's safety is really weighing on me. Why was that sentence? My guest in the first place. Concern for the doctor's... Oh, yeah, that's that was really the sentence. You're such a good girl. But take care. I hear things haven't been too calm there lately. Mm-hmm. Lady Encha, we can depart now. Worry not. All responsibility will lie on... Will lie with me on this departure. You're a huge help, uncle. It's rare to... It's rare you ask me to help you with things. How would I ever refuse this? Kiar, I might be gone for a little while longer. Uh, a little long while. Why are those... The sentences feel very weird in this one. I don't know why, but like... Reading the other one for me was like way easier than reading this one has been so far. If you can, if you can, go back and tell my sister. I'll reply to her after I'm done. It's quite all right. I just can wait. I just can wait. That's pretty. Aurora, I need info to make judgment calls, especially your views as a local. Tell me how you see the doctor's current situation. Gnosis was likely in a very sensitive position, given he was formerly in charge of the mines and valleys. Ugh. Sir Encio is putting the doctor in that same position now, is bound to draw Arctaz's attention. Tell me in detail about why the mines and valleys are such a sensitive area. Hmm, it'd be more convenient if we had a map on hand. Kiarig's topography isn't too complicated and it's not very finely partitioned either. Usually us locals just call each area the mines, valleys, woodlands, lakes, mountains, creeks, and plains. The creeks and plains and most of the lakes are the Polarocious in the north. The brown tails in the west are mainly of the woodlands and the minority of the lakes. Oh, so there. Okay. So that's the Polaroche. That's the woodlands area. Silver ashes are mainly the mountains, valleys, and mines. There's, They have so little lakes, you can essentially ignore it. And the valleys and mines, actually, they represent nearly half of the Silver Ashes territory already. Between them, the mines have always been incredibly important land to the Silver Ashes, because pr practically all the ore using carry comes from there. While the valleys were only de developed in recent years, originally they were extremely poor land to work, and there weren't more than a few hamlets. People always considered an area with no use, but after Sir Anciot's founded Carlin Trade, he chose that land to use for siting factories. The majority of Carlin Trade's manufacturing is built there, and it's extremely close to Mount Carlin too. On top of that, I exchanged some info with Kiarig merchants before we left, but everyone who comes outside to do business is related to Carlin Trade in some way. A month ago, with the Great Santis' backing, the Brown Tail and Prowler Roches requested and organized a team to investigate health and safety issues at the factories, but the team met a surprise attack secretly ordered by Gnosis, who wouldn't play along at all. I don't know how that info came out, but everyone believes Gnosis was involved in it. That led to the Polaroche's head, Arctaz, getting the inspiration from the Vinebear Court to send troops to station in the valleys, and it's because of the consequences of Gnosis' ext Gnosis's extreme actions that he finally removed. He was finally removed. At the meeting, the doctor mentioned NCO's reason for making the invitation. We do help construct oropathy related facilities for Carlin Trade, but he never mentioned having the doctor manage everything in this place before. Which is to say, the doctors actively climbed in onto the scales of this conspiracy. Very doctor-like to do. <laughs> Very doctor-like to do. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, hmm, that seems likely, but Carlin Trade and Rhodes Island have a perfectly fine relationship. 
but and the doctor would probably only accept because of that relationship. For now, I can't imagine the reason why Sir Encios would want to set up the doctor. What do we do now? Contact Dr. Kaltzet? The land ships... The land ships headed for Victoria. We need to use the local large-scale comm station because our handheld equipment's got no way to get in touch. Ugh. Captain, I surveyed for a stretch. Guard force on the doctor's present placement is low strength. The Palo Roche residents should have about 200 in guards. Training and arms not up to outside army standard. We can break through on a surprise raid. I've checked the surrounding terrain too. Alternate plan is we infiltrate, but that needs setting up explosives in multiple locations beforehand. Going in and pulling out both need manufactured explosions to draw attention. There's some points in the wall structure that will let... Wait, Captain? Hmm? I feel like things aren't going to get to that point. <laughs> no matter what happens, we need to ensure the doctor's safety. That's our first priority. I agree with that, but... If we bring force against the House of Palo Roche in the run-up to the Grand Ceremony, then I'm worried Rhodes Island will end up an enemy of Mount Carlin. What will the Carrig operators, the Carrig operators at Rhodes Island do? I need to consider the worst case scenario and the least honorable way of solving things. The present outlook is pessimistic. And if I have to make a choice, you know I'll only choose the doctor. We all hope things won't go that far, but you know as well as I that it doesn't depend on us. And I have responsibility to the doctor and Rhodes Island. I just can't shake the sense that Sir Enciodes probably has his own plan. The Doctor chose to play them at their own game, so some kind of clue must have been there long ago, and the Doctor already prepped to deal with it. I'm prepped to deal with it, guys! <laughs> I've never doubted the Doctor's abilities for a moment, I believe. But I need to make my own preparations beforehand. The Doctor put me on standby, so there's a place for us in, in the plan. We need to get in touch with the doctor first. Aurora. Hmm? You respect NCOs a lot? Yes. Without him, I would have never been able to leave Kierig and come into contact with the outside world. Understandable. But for the moment, I want you to forget that. Starting now, you treat him as a hypothetical enemy. Can you do that? If you feel like you can't, you can head back right now. I won't blame you. But at the same time, I'm an employee of Rhodes Island too. Remember what you've just said. Understood. But, do we have to watch out for Cliffheart and the rest too? I trust Cliffheart, but have no confidence in Encha Silver Ash. Aww. For now, we figure out we figure how to meet up with the Doctor. It's Kiar! You're the Doctor's subordinates? Slash. <laughs> Instant, a hardened steel blade streaks through the air, stopping just a hair's width from the woman's neck. Wow, that's a rare way to use a sword here. Who are you? Well, that's there's no need to be this ferocious to an ordinary girl you just met. Penning this position and cracking a joke in this context, does that make you an ordinary girl? Put the blade down first. Your Rhodes Island doctor sent me. I was asked to bring you a message. That's cool. I like Kiar. That's a really fun character. Kiara Gonder, sorry. Please take good care of yourself while I'm gone. Fuck, that's an annoying pathing. Can your eyes keep up? Can your eyes keep up? Ah, uh, fuck. Wait, this isn't my normal team. Hmm. I mean, honestly, it should be able to win it anyway, though. Mm hmm. I'm late. <laughs> Losing sight. Here I am. Here I am. How soon do you want them gone? Dude, you're not winning Come against on. her. Let's pick up the pace. <laughs> I, I I mean it's still for level what 20, 30? I don't remember. So there's no way I lose this at all. Take aim. Uh oh shit. Once you're living in the ice fields, prioritizes attacking the target with the lowest defense. Ready to heal! That still hurt even with a healer on the field? That's crazy. Come on! Let's okay, bastard. 
Nice. Feels bad to lose your target, doesn't it? Let me create a diversion. This halberd isn't just for show. Fuck, it's at one health. You I mean, bro. <laughs> just walks into Degenbrecker. Hang in there, I'm coming. It's, it's just so funny to me because, like, in the lore, she's so scary. And then this you dude just, like, walks head first into her. Here I am! Still mulling a usual weapon to tell me who you are. Bro, that was easy. Honestly, this team is kind of, like, really strong for a bunch of three stars. With, like, this has minimal five star and six star, and it's, like, mostly four stars and three stars. But it's, like, really strong. Granted, I used all my six stars, but still. Well, well, you actually came to us Brown Tails territory for a visit all by your lonesome. You got balls, Gnosis Edelweiss. Wise. Wheeze. Uh, I've always been upright and honorable. Hmm. That's rich coming for you after you were kicked out of Carlin Trade for shady business. I thought you I'd see Rotatos here. Anyone could bluff like that. Rotatos wasn't going to take your word so easily. As I said before, it takes two to cooperate. Seems my words have reached her, and that's more than enough to me. Hmm. <laughs> Take all you talk all you want. So since you came here all by yourself, you said last time things have come to this. What's that all about? What things have come to what? Ah. <sighs> Why do you think NCOs proposed this transfer of powers? <laughs> Well, that, isn't that because he can't take on both not take on both the power rushes and us so he figured a compromise compromise oh compromise think again madam serious i dare say that your sister thinks otherwise ever since ncodes came back to kyarig was there any single thing he did that wasn't in pursuit of his ultimate victory is his proposal to put the saintus back in power really a compromise Here's a hint. The ceremony. Hmm? What about the ceremony? Don't tell me he's going to throw a fit there and refuse to turn over his power. The ceremony is nigh, and there will be more trains coming in and out of the Silver Ash territory, transporting both resources and people. Take a guess. Why did Enciodes himself propose to hand the Saintus his powers, even arranging for it to happen on the day of the ceremony? Arctaz, a short-sighted man, he thinks Enciodes will pull some kind of dirty trick once she's in control. And so he resigned, reassigned his men to guard the valleys and the mines, even to keep an eye on the doctor that Enciodes invited. But the funny thing is that he doesn't know it's all pointless. Sirius looks at the corner of the room for a brief moment. There is nothing there, but Gnosis notices it. Gnosis looks straight at the wall there. Rotados, you can't be that stupid. I will tell you what Enciodes is planning. But you'd better see me yourself next time. Even if I have to see his schemes come to fruition and you two imprisoned, I won't allow myself to be a fool again. Now, excuse me. He's got like the edgy anime character kind of look. <laughs> Rotados. Hey, Rotados, I know you're there. Pipe down, Sirius. There's. There's a rumbling noise, and the wallboard slowly moves to the side. Rotados, sitting inside, slowly rises and steps out. You believe in what he said? Maybe I should say I'm shocked that you never considered the possibility, sister. But even the Saintus is on our side now. Can Enciodes really be so unscrupulous that he... That he... Don't be silly, serious. From the moment he first trampled our faith, when he laid this train track straight to Carrick and broke away from the Saintus, no, ever since he so calmly agreed to let his sister become the Saintus in exchange for his seat in the Tri Clan Council, he hasn't cared. We all know how well those siblings got along in the earlier years. I also once thought that letting the devout Enya become the Vine Bear Court's hostage was a brilliant move, but now? I wouldn't be surprised if he one day brought his men up the mountain to burn down the whole Vine Bear Court. Don't tell me NCOs is really going to use force. Slow down, sister. There's another possibility. He could pulling, be pulling our leg. Why? To make us think he's up to something shady so he, we end up making the first move. What good does that do to him? 
if he's not trying to have someone else do his dirty work and off his enemies, he's trying to find an excuse to start a war and earn himself some clout in the end. Huh. Whatever it is, we're probably all in trouble. Well, how do we figure this out? No idea. Not at all? I'm not exactly omniscient here. But if he's lying, there's got to be holes. You. Your orders, Matriarch? Dig up anything you can find on Gnosis. We looked into him before, but he's had a lot of dealings since his job got handed off. There should be a lot more clues now. Start there. Understood. You better not disappoint me, Gnosis, Edelways. Rotados, if he was telling the truth, would he really take him in? Would you really take him in? Why not? He's an Edelweiss. The family who got Enciode's father killed 15 years ago. So what? They betrayed the Silver Ashes, but when Enciodes came back from studying in Victoria, this guy tagged along, wanting a slice of the pie. If you ask me, he's the type who doesn't give two licks about loyalty, only profit and success. Now that he's made an enemy of his master, he's got to find a new sugar daddy to get his revenge. Right, that's the most obvious reason. So you... Serious, the Silver Ashes control the gates, the Pile Roaches have their rich farmlands in their army, but the Brown Tails are nothing, have nothing. Why do you think we stand as one of the Carrick's three families? Because we do what we do earns the highest return. I learned Grandpa's lessons just as well as you did. Right, since I'm letting you in, there are lots of things that you really must spend some time pondering. As a child of the Brown Tails, in times like these, you need to know the best course of action. It's more than just knowing the risks of dealing with a criminal. You need to learn to assess all this yourself. Profit always comes with risks. We need to learn how to mitigate these risks beyond just sending them out along with the profits, dear sister. Our biggest worry is that everything he just said was true, but also part of a lie. Another thing? You've gotten really close with that servant of yours, haven't you? You mean Monch? Monch, Conch, Gaunch, whatever. Don't trust anyone too much, sister. Ugh. I don't need you to tell me what to do. I'll show you how much stronger I can make brown tails without you. Ugh. I should never have given NCOs this chance. I have this br that brain dead moron Arctos to thank. Take Enyo away from her scumbag brother. Don't make me laugh. Whatever, Yucatan. Yes, Matriarch? Let the Apollo Roaches know that I'll visit in a few days. Of course. She's gonna visit in a few days and discuss the fact that Gnosis is probably hiding something while also wanting to work with them. Seems kind of counterintuitive to also like work with someone but also not. Uh, Doctor, we've entered the valley. My butt hurts. It's about time. Sorry, Sir Arctaz never permitted any rail tracks to be built in the Polaroche's territory. It's not in our habit to use cars. I suppose it's not to it's not it may not be easy for a foreigner like you to ride a burden beast. Dr. Babaji, welcome. I am Sir NCO Secretary Chester. Please allow me to accompany you as you survey the area. Do you have Sir Arctaz? The absolute peace of mind will ask you to inspect each and every factory and mine site before they de declared closed. Once you have checked everything here, both Sir Arctas and the Great Elder will give their approval. Only then will the transfer be considered complete. What do you think, General Valet? That would be the best course. In that case, please follow me. We'll take a stroll. We'll take stroll and get a grasp of the environment and situation here. Wasn't he, uh, NCO's butler? Still, this is just way too sudden, right? I had heard there was bad news from the last tri-clan tri -clan council, but that's not enough to send us running. My son. My son was hurt while working in the factory not too long ago. I'm still waiting for his medical subsidy. We've always believed Sir NCO's. He's not going to abandon us, is he? All of us put in so much work to improve Carrie's livelihood. We, he can't just shut the factory down like that. What about the infected like us? We finally found work at the factory. Please, everyone, calm down. Listen to me. Oh, nice timing, Doctor. Carrier? It's been a while. I'm really sorry that we dragged you into our local affairs. It's funny that I have him selected, too. 
Like I have Degenbrecher, Carrier. I, I could put Matterhorn on if I wanted to. I just have like the whole Carlin trade group under my command. Please bear with it for a little while longer. Once the ceremony is over, the Silver Ashes will properly receive you. But before that, I think I might need your help with something. You want me to help calm these people down? Fuck, I launched it again. Where'd it go? Oh, that's tragic. So I can't see anything right now. The ring light has blinded me. I can't see anything down there right now. And sharp as always, Doctor. Looks like you're doing well yourself. Don't be so humble, Doctor. Your abilities are on another level. I've seen them myself. And we'll need your help with many other things as well. Well then, I'll need to borrow the Doctor for this job of mine. Just for a bit. Would the Palarosha's mind? Mind? By all means. Friends and countrymen, Sir Enciodes has personally instructed me to offer all those affected by an explanation on his behalf. It so happens that the Doctor is here too. The Doctor is Sir Enciodes' esteemed guest and Carlin Trade's current Chief Technical Officer. Today, together with all of you, our guest will bear witness to this message. At the tri -Clan Council, the Great Houses and the Vine Bear Court reached an understanding for an interim and will begin discussion on any follow-up matters. Because of the grave mistakes made by Gnosis and the, the previous CTO, Carl Trade must shut down all of its factories in a show of goodwill. Once the transfer of powers is complete, the Silver Ash family will actively work with the Vine Bear Court and advocate for a gradual reopening of some of our factories in a controlled, carefully planned manner. Hmm. Please trust me and trust the Silver Ash family that this is for the best. Now, as I introduced earlier, and will emphasize once more, this is Sir Enciod's esteemed guest as well as Carlin Trade's current CTO. Our guest is a master, not only of the production and mining technologies that we are all familiar with, but also the prevention and treatment of oropathy. The doctor, likewise, represents a medical organization that will help Carlin Trade answer the critical questions that we are all struggling with, including the medical support issue we were just discussing. Such things would not be possible in our mountains of yore, and together with the doctor, Carlin Trade will bring will bring about this new feature. Future. Feature. Nod. At the same time, it is Sir Enciod's wish for the territorial <laughs> subjects of the other two houses to cast aside their differences and help us build caring. There is no need to for panic. Please put your faith in Sir Enciod's and the Sanctus. Have faith that Karagonder will never abandon her children. Ah, uh, by Karagonder. By Karagonder. By Karagonder. Now then, I will... Wait, hold on a minute. After hearing you out, I, I have something to say. Please. It's not that we don't trust the other two houses. It's just we've really had it fairly nice the last couple of years thanks to Sir Enciodes. We have work. We get enough food to eat. And we even get painkillers. We never had it so easy before. Since we heard the factory was going to be shut down, we've all been worried that the good times are coming to an end. Please rest assured. The doctor, as I introduced just now, is an Oropathy scholar. Carlin Trade invited the doctor here precisely because we are concerned about our infected workforce's livelihood. So please, put your faith in us. Carlin Trade. One moment. Yes, is there something you'd like to add, doctor? Uh, I was told Mr. Encio's is more practical. Trust alone isn't going to keep anyone fed. That's true, but I was told Mr. Encio's is more practical. There were, are also those, there are also those of the mind that his ideas are impractical. My apologies, I have misspoken. Friends, it's true, I am not done yet. We didn't keep our internal affairs in check and that led you to losing your jobs. That is entirely our fault. Carlin Trade promises to keep your original positions unfilled. You will continue to be compensated, and we will arrange job opportunities with equal or even greater pay and benefits. And I am sure you can already tell that, unlike Gnosis, the Doctor actually understands what you truly need. The Doctor will bring Carlin Trade the technologies that will truly benefit our day-to-day -day lives. Right. This is what Sir Encio has truly wanted all of us to know. Sounds great. I'll head back and let everyone know. Good, that's very good. But don't forget Karagander's teachings, young man. Moses that she. <sighs> good work. Not at all. It's my job to speak for him. Is that the help you wanted? Convincing performance. Is that the help you wanted? Thank you, Doctor. 
But I'm sure you'll agree that this was worth helping. Okay, I'll take my leave now. Courier. Yes? Marencios will be pleased. That should be true. You can't be here just for that, you too, Courier. I'll say that. I'm not sure what you were talking about, Doctor. It's the serious music. All the requirements have been met, just as Madam Sirius is expected. NCO sent wise, presumably as some kind of insurance policy, but that's not nearly enough. You are to ensure that things go according to Madam Sirius's plans once Wise is gone. Yes! You were followed. What? I didn't... There was only one of them, now long gone, running after the men Sirius assigned to you. I'm very sorry for betraying your expectations, Sir Gnosis. No, perhaps this is for the better. I'm prepared to be your pawn and do whatever you say. I'm just a researcher, Monch. Pawns are meaningless to me. What I want is a partner that I can work with. Proceed with the plan. Don't worry. Rotados and Sirius won't catch you. Understood. Your face just now. It seems the expression folds of a feather flock together nice. is indeed true. I fix my shirt. It's like writing weird. Oh. That was the story one and BL2. The second fight in Breaking the Ice. Um, I'm liking this one. I liked the other one better. I liked uh, the Rises, like, still burn to hers more. Not for any reason, really. It's probably because it was my first event played as a new player. And that's probably just it. Gnosis, obviously, we know he already rejoins with NCOs. So it's, it's probably already spoiled for me that... They were working together or something in the end, and th so Gnosis just rejoins him. I am interested to learn more about Kiar, though. She's a character that isn't really talked a lot about, or talked about a lot in the, uh, right, li the Rides to Lake Silburn of hers. Like, she's just kind of there, and they probably, like, assume that you know her more from this event itself. Yeah, it's fun. I'm enjoying this a lot. If you liked it, like and subscribe. I'd love to have you around. This, it was so much fun to learn more about the characters in this series it was, it's it's a lot of fun i hope that it keeps being fun yeah, i i got a couple comments and messages on discord saying that the boss for this one's a little annoying but i mean if i was able to beat harold i mean i should be able to beat this right because holy crap that man was crazy that's it for me though oh right the discord the discord will be linked in the description like always and the ko-fi as well if you want to support go on ahead it's up to you also if you don't want to support just follow you can see the thumbnails early that way other than that though you better have a good night and bye bye